this video to show you what we've just created. It's taken a couple of days, but uh, we created a waste oil heater. We took an old, an old electric water heater and changed it into a waste oil heater. Uh, didn't take a whole lot. I don't weld and I don't have a lot of fancy tools, so I took it down and had uh, one of the companies here in Winnemucca cut a door in it with the hinges. I bought the hinges. They cut the door in it with the hinges and they cut a six inch hole on the top for the, the flue. PVC, just standard four inch PV, or pellet stove pipe. And what we have, I'll just give you the rundown of it, is at the top up here, we have our waste oil feed. It's just drip, nothing fancy to it. I took a plastic bucket, put uh, at the top of that, that's my strainer, my, uh, my funnel strainer, and then it's just a plastic bucket with a sight glass on the side. The oil drips down through a valve, it goes into the water heater on the top here where the water lines normally go in on a water heater. Again, it has to be electric. A gas doesn't work because a gas one has a big uh, pipe going down the middle that the flue gas escapes from. So it needs to be an electric water heater. So anyway, let's start down here at the bottom. We have three ports that we found out we need to have for natural draft. We have the door that we put a hinge on and a little peep sight here that when the flame is going you can see in there and you can actually see where the oil is dripping. On this side we have our oil drip which is coming from here goes all the way down the water heater we put a little uh, nice we, we went from a three-quarter down to a three-eighths fitting put our pipe drilled the the fitting of the the tube fitting out it's just regular brass tube fitting for copper we drilled it out and ran our copper straight through it otherwise if you don't do that it's going to get stuck but you just take a drill drill right through it and you get rid of the little ridge the copper goes straight through it i tighten that up comes down and it's bent slightly going into this stainless steel pan if you don't have stainless steel then you're you're in trouble it's going to melt so a stainless steel pan just a regular big uh, stainless steel mixing bowl I put some bricks and some sand in this just to give it a little bit of weight on the bottom, a little bit of ballast. And then this pipe over here is actually our air feed. We have a little blower, the same kind of blower that you would get, it's just a Coleman blower that you would put on a air up an air mattress with a three quarter inch copper uh, pipe. Okay, and that does the same thing. That goes straight up on the inside, and it comes in right here. What we did is we took a took uh, just regular rope sealant like you get for a regular wood stove, clamped it down with a pipe clamp, uh, just a regular pipe clamp, tighten that up. This still moves slightly, but it's okay. The bowl comes out. You, all of this stuff moves around. You can get that out of there, clean it as you want to. This will slide up and down so that you can get it out of there. And then when you're done, you just put it back into the bowl. And you can see on the bottom there, there's a 90. You put a 90 on the end of that so you can direct the airflow, and what it does is it goes in that bowl and it's, it gives it a real a twirling effect that really uh, helps with the flame. So then you set that back down and with that pipe rope, stove rope on there, the sealant, it won't leak. So you, that keeps your, your gas and stuff from getting out. And again we put a 6 inch hole on there. We wrap that with rope to keep it from leaking. I've got a couple of pieces, just regular strap you buy at a hardware store. We bolt it down to the top of the water heater. So really the only thing that I had to have done cost me about, about 180 bucks to have the six inch hole cut on the top, machined on the top, and I had the door cut out. On the door I put the brackets here in the back, just a piece of flat steel with self-tapping bolts and then the sealant the door seal goes behind that so you can kind of seal that up. I tried the glue, the glue didn't work, fell right off, so I did that. This is tucked up real nicely underneath this metal. So what we found out is, is that when you run the air and you have your vac, your, your regular air coming in, your, your draft air coming in, it makes for a really nice flame and we'll show you that here in, in a little bit. So this is our waste oil heater. We, uh, all of the parts we got just at the hardware store, real, real simple. Um, like I said, plastic bucket, plastic feed with a valve. This is our thing. Your, your blower's probably going to be kind of loud if you get one, you know, if you ever use one that pumps up a, an air mattress, it's kind of loud. So what we did is we took another one of our plastic buckets, filled it with insulation, just regular stove insulation or anything, just to deaden the sound. 
and then we put our put our blower. This is only a temporary mounting spot for it right now because we're going to actually make something more tip, more permanent. But it basically, it's just just like this. Took a plastic hose, regular radiator hose, and put it to a Coleman uh, blower that you again for an air mattress. Put it in the bucket, and it quiets it down real nice. Doesn't make hardly any noise whatsoever. So that's our uh, that's our waste oil heater. Now that we've cleaned it out, we've also put our our gel in the uh, stainless steel pan. We're going to go ahead and start the oil drip before we light it. We don't want a whole lot. We just want a little bit of a drip because otherwise you're going to fill that pan up with oil and it's going to be a lot harder to get started. So this is just a standard, it's an air valve, a brass air valve, uh, but it works really well because it's hard to move. So you're not going to get a lot of drastic changes out of it. So then we just kind of take a look down there, and when the oil starts to drip, then we can go ahead and light it. Go ahead and pause it. All right, we're down to we're down to just a drip in there, and it'll have to be adjusted a little bit. But once you get an oil in there, then you can go ahead and light the gel. Pretty cool, huh? You get that gel lit, now you got to let that go for a while because you want all that gel to be burning. If I start that fan up too quick, it'll blow that fire out. So once it gets going, give it a few minutes. And the oil's dripping a little bit. You may have to adjust that drip just a little bit, like it stopped dripping, so I'm going to turn that up a little bit. <clears throat> and there's just a drip drip. That gel is going pretty good. It'll that gel is pretty amazing because it'll stay lit for quite a while. And this is great for camping or whatever too. You can get your uh, campfire started pretty quick with that. I take that every time we go. So we got a pretty good flame. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start that up, start that blower up. really good here. This whole project is, is ruined. Just kidding. All right, now you can see through the peephole and you can adjust your oil now to where you got a little more than a trickle. But you can adjust. So you got yourself a nice little flame and that stainless steel is already starting to glow. gets up, this thing will run smooth as a Cadillac. If you have a Cadillac that runs smooth, that is. You know, right now we're having a little bit of trouble with getting the, the temperature and the fuel feed balanced out. And our paint is brand new paint, so it's smoking a little bit. There we go. Now 
now we've got it. Now we've got it sounding like a jet engine. It's should be doing okay. You can already, I mean just seconds into it, you can already feel feel the heat coming off of it. And you can see the paint smoking. This is high temperature black stove paint too, by the way. It's not just a regular old fashioned paint. This is high temperature stuff. So once it cures, it'll look real nice. So that's it. That is our electric water heater converted to a drip oil, waste oil. And right now we're burning automatic transmission fluid. You can burn any kind of oil you want. You can burn motor oil, anything. Any kind of oil. You could probably burn vegetable oil, although I've never tried that, but uh, make your own. Try it. See what you can burn with it. We'll catch you later. This is Kevin from Rushing Services telling you how to do it yourself. And Tommy's behind the camera. Hi, Tommy! Now we're going to show you how we light this thing. It's real simple. Doesn't take a whole lot at all. I like to use the gel. It's, a, it's just a... I just probably any kind that you wanted to buy, but it's a fire starting gel. It's the easiest, the simplest, the quickest way to light it that I found. You can start these things with anything. As long as you got a flame, you can use paper, you could use some paper and some wood chips, but this is really the quickest and the easiest, and it doesn't cost all that much if you only start it once a day. So what you do is you, you take a little bit of this. Oh, pause it. Go. Well, we just realized that we forgot to clean out our, our fuel oil line. What, what happens is from time to time, this will get crusty on the end with just slag from the, the impurities in the, in the oil. It's real simple. You can take a screw and insert it into the 3 8 inch tubing and clean that, the hard stuff out. And then what you can do, you can just take a little air compressor with a little bit of, it doesn't have to have a whole lot of pressure on it, put a little air compressor on the end of it and you just blow that out and that cleans out. All, and then now your all line is free to, free to flow, all the boogers are out of it, and we're good to go. So now we're going to back this up, and we're going to get back to our lighting instructions. So you put a little bit of this gel, let me get over on this side, put a little bit of the gel down in the pan, just like that, and then you take your lighter, well, what I like to do first, too, is get the oil dripping. Because once you get the... Pause it. 